Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe Live. Um, here with Corey. You can see here that we've uh, blasted away some of this pink stuff. And if you look down here, you can see the 4680 batteries. Um, what we have found out so far is that um, taking this apart is a miserable deal. I cannot begin to tell you how many hours we've sunk in on this thing trying to get things to pieces. And what we're going to do is tell you a little bit about what we know so far. And, uh, and Corey is dying to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah. So first of all, getting the pink stuff off, we rented a dry ice blaster. So if you want to figure out what that is, you can Google what a dry ice blaster, but it's a lot. that was from one of our viewers, viewers. So thank you very much. And the first thing we did before we used the dry ice blaster was remove the foam that was on the side. So the cells are not all the way outboard in the battery case. And you do see you have an aluminum lower and the upper was steel. And if you get in here, Eric, you can see that there is an ABS base uh, underneath the cells. And then there's a thin layer of mica. So I'm going to point at the mica. You can see this right here, a thin layer of mica. And then a, a, that black part is the ABS base. Um, so the the vents are on the bottom side of the cell. So if you have an overcharging scenario or something going wrong, it's gonna vent downward. And then these pieces right here, you can see the collector plates or, and bus bars that are connected to the top of the cells. We haven't been able to remove this upper plastic piece right here. And our team thinks this is a nylon. Is that right, Sandy? What do you I, think? I, uh, I'm not going to rub around on it, but to me, it strikes me that this would be a good application for nylon because of the heat and the durability. And my guess is that it's probably going to have glass in it as well. The, the one thing that we should talk about is these uh, uh, parallel connectors. So we've got, we've got three of them coming in line and then connected together to give us yeah. the... And Go ahead. These small little squares right here are where they were, I think, laser welded. And you can see there's one, two, three little squares. We've carefully disconnected that and rolled the metal, this aluminum metal foil over. What this did was isolate this module from that module because we want to make it as safe as possible and isolating each module from one another lowers the amount of voltage we're dealing with. And Sandy, you want to talk about the thermal lines. So now, almost like archaeology, you know, we're digging, a, digging out a bone at an archaeology dig. We can start to see some of the cooling lines, but they have a traditional uh, side cooling. And you can see yeah, you one can of see the, the tubes right there. Yeah. So um, initially, we had been told and were under the understanding that this was going to be bottom cooled. And that basically says, I don't think so. So um, again, we're still picking at this, like we're still arguing whether, whether or not that's underneath that orange thing there is the body control module or is there a battery control module. But at the end of the day, I can't think of what else it could possibly be. And then we've got these little, I don't know, look like little uh, uh, bees nests or something. Uh, we're not quite sure what those are. But Eric, if you can zoom in right here, you can see these very tiny uh, copper wires. So this flat wire is most likely used to monitor the temperature or the voltage for balancing the cells. Um, our dry ice blaster is strong enough to blow away the pink stuff and not really damage any really robust plastic pieces or metal pieces, but it was strong enough to damage these wires. And Tom, one of our experts here, Notice, noted that we don't think there's any fusing on these, on these circuits, but they were small enough where essentially they can end up being fuses for themselves. Um, if you're using a much larger wire, it's more, it's more uh, a Robust. bigger gauge, uh, you may have to have fuses offline somewhere. This is a strategy that Tesla's been using for years and years. Um, ever since the Model 3 and the Model Y came out, they've been using flat wire on the top of their modules. There are four distinct modules, and it's one thing we wanted to see if, if when Sandy first predicted what we thought the battery would look like, we thought it would be all the cells in there as one big brick. It's not quite there yet. There's this barrier in between uh, module one, two, three, and four that looks like a fiberglass, 
fibrous phenolic barrier. Now, I don't know what our team's conclusion on that, but it would be maybe a thermal runaway mitigation. Uh, if you had something go wrong, it would keep it from propagating all the way throughout the whole battery. But actually, one of the things that we have seen is that this is cleverly done so that um, your chances of having a thermal runaway, I think, are going to be less than some of the other guys in the, uh, in the automotive business. I, I will tell you, this is a lot different than what I was expecting. I'm, again, I'm dazzled by the, uh, the technology that Tesla has cranked out on this. This looks different again than anything we've ever seen. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. It's got batteries and it's got connectors and, and um, contactors, I should say, and, um, and bus bars. But at the end of the day, every time you look at something from Tesla, it looks like, well, this doesn't even come from the same company. The only thing that's similar is, like I say, it's got batteries and separators and conductors and, uh, and bus bars. But at the end of the day, it's, it seems like it seems like they, they just they, they don't have a they they don't have a limit on their capacity to invent. Yeah, and in this facility we have about a dozen EV batteries, and the one thing we haven't really seen are threaded fasteners. So think back, Sandy, to the BMW i3 that we received. Each set of batteries, they were prismatic cells, were secured with aluminum plates, and those aluminum modules were secured to the bottom of this huge aluminum structure you're eliminating all these threaded fasteners and threaded, threaded fastening operations with either laser welding, high strength adhesives, epoxies, glues, and, and Sandy, what's one of your principles when it comes to increasing quality? Well, if you want to increase quality, there are three things that drive poor quality. Uh, number one is fasteners of any kind, okay? So I don't care if it's a screw or a rivet or what have you, it's one of the biggest opportunities for, uh, for failure. When I was working for Ford, um, we did a great big giant study. Uh, the, uh, the sealing and fastening team did. I was a co-captain on that. And guess what we found? And we found out that about 75% of all our catastrophes were directly attributable to uh, threaded fasteners. When your head blows, if you have a cylinder head, uh, if you have a nice vehicle and the cylinder head blows, it's not the cylinder head's fault, it's the, um, it's the threaded fasteners. And not having threaded fasteners is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, amazing. And one of the most common comments we get either on the YouTube comments, on Twitter, on Instagram is, oh my gosh, how are you gonna recycle this or repurpose this? It's one of the most common misconceptions, and I think Elon said it in a tweet, this battery will turn into high quality ore. So yeah. imagine if you found this out in a rock quarry, it's premium ore. They're gonna grind this thing down essentially into a, a slurry and well, melt you, it all down. Yeah. You so know. yeah, the, the way that this would work is this unit as, as a unit, one complete with the lid on and everything else, is gonna get dropped into um, a bath of liquid nitrogen. That puts you just a little bit above uh, absolute zero. Absolute zero is Kelvin, and that absolute zero would mean that the molecules would be just, they just fall apart. They would be nothing to, to bind them together. But this will go into that bath of liquid nitrogen, it'll freeze down, and then it's gonna be ground up. It's gonna be going through a grinder that will basically pulverize this into very, 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 very small parts then what they're gonna do is they're gonna float it. In other words, everything floats at a different density and they'll be able to pull off the aluminum, which is the bottom, the steel, which will be lower than that. And then they'll go through and pick out every one of the different components that's in here, the lithium, the uh, everything that's in here, everything that's in here will be able to be separated and sorted and brought, brought back into, like you say, it's brand new, uh, Mm, brand new elements. It, it, they're the same thing as if I ground them out of the dirt. So this is a this is not going to be a hard. Uh, this is not going to be hard for the different uh, recyclers and whatnot to do the job once they've invested in the uh, correct equipment. We were also able to get an exact count. So I know a lot of people were wondering if each of these four modules were going to be the same. So far, we're counting 34 by six, which is 204 
for what you know this one quarter and we believe the center and the outboard are the same which would bring us up to sandy well there's two schools of thought uh there's two schools of thought on this and you'll see here that i've got my handy dandy little uh, chart and so one of them is um, 828 and the other number is uh, 816. so somewhere along the line there's a couple of extra cells that could be in here but we won't know until we've actually gotten rid of this cover plate uh, that goes over the, this, what I think is nylon and, uh, and uh, glass. Once that's off, and then we can actually count uh, the number, uh, then we'll, we'll know for sure. But for right now, okay. a little bit, a little bit uh, off. Um, so I think to wrap this video up, what we're gonna do is, Sandy and I aren't gonna do it right now, but our team is gonna pull up this plate to show you what it looks like underneath. Um, underneath you'll be able to see how the collector plates are connected to the top and the outside so the positive and the negative of the cell I believe the center is a positive and the outside of the can is a negative and we'll have that b-roll plop in right now but we didn't want to do it on camera because it's kind of uh, well it's glued little... itself back together and uh, I don't I'm not feeling lucky um, We'd appreciate it if, um, if you can um, mm, uh, keep supporting us uh, by subscribing. So long. Have a great day. This side, um, looking that way, because yeah. I think we should move here What do here I do with there. my hands? I don't know. Uh, it depends. Are you a hand model? Uh, you know, you're styling gloves. Anyways. Um, it's Ricky Bob. Yeah, it's Ricky. Who? Ricky Bob.